Thank you, Speaker. I move that a bill be introduced for an act to amend the Residential Tenancies Act 2010 to provide protection for tenants, including flood impacted areas. The question is that bill now be introduced. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Again, say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. I bring up the bill, an electronic copy of which has been provided to the clerk, and move that this bill now be read a second time. Speaker, if I may, today on behalf of the Greens, I come to this chamber with a sense of urgency. Urgency that demonstrates the crisis happening across New South Wales as a result of the devastating weather impacts and the floods that have occurred. And the fact that this uh, environmental disaster, this climate disaster, has turned very quickly into an escalating housing crisis and will continue to do so unless the New South Wales government proceeds and acts. This bill before us today, the government has the potential to be able to suspend standing orders and allow to bring on to the debate. We have done the heavy lifting when it comes to looking at the measures that are needed right now in the northern rivers, in areas of the Hawkesbury and across the strait in flood impacted areas. And they could right now suspend standing orders and pass this bill that would mean that as of today, those people in flood impacted areas in New South Wales that rent their homes would be protected immediately and have a moratorium on evictions and in addition to that would see a cap on rents to make sure that greedy landlords don't seek to profit from what is a horrific and tragic crisis that we have seen in flood impacted areas across the state. And I'll just go through some of those flood impacted areas for you, just to see the scale and size and scope of what we are talking about here. There are, there are literally a list, a, a huge list that goes for over a page of flood impacted LGAs, of renters that are in desperate need of support and help for this bill and the provisions right here. New South Wales has long been experiencing a housing crisis, which has made the affordability a key issue in for many, many people that rent in New South Wales. And the situation has been exasperated by the wake of fl devastating floods throughout New South Wales, which have impacted thousands of people who need specific protections right now. This bill seeks to amend the Residential Tenancies Act 2010 to provide for two things, increased protections for tenants generally across New South Wales and additional specific protections in New South Wales flood impacted areas. This bill addresses two crucial issues faced by renters in New South Wales in light of the housing affordability crisis and the social housing deficit as a failure of successive governments in New South Wales to act. It also addresses minimum standards for rental properties so that renters are protected from living in conditions which are detrimental to their health by inserting both free from mould and waterproofing as measures for fit habitation requirements in rental properties across the state. I understand, Speaker, that as a result of a joint sitting that I'm going to be interrupted. So what I will do in relation to this second read is focus specifically on the urgent measures that are needed to protect people that are renting in flood impacted areas. And then I will turn at my next opportunity to go through the detail of what is required across the state to provide protections to renters. But as I say, I hope that the government is listening because these amendments to the Residential Tenancies Act are drafted and Minister Eleni Patinos could right now take these, I'm happy for it to be a government bill, take these and put them in place right now to impact, to assist flood affected victims. I want to take a, knowledge, a moment to acknowledge the fact that members on all sides of this place stood on Tuesday and talked about the personal stories and the impacts on their community. The member for Coffs Harbour, the member for Lakemba, the member for Tweed, the member for the Blue Mountains, the member for the Hawkesbury, the member for Prospect, all contributed to the debate along with me. The member for Lismore and my Greens colleague, the member for Ballina, both weren't in the chamber but were still in their communities and have been working tirelessly to support them during this time. And they know that right now the government needs to do absolutely everything they can to protect those that are impacted. The images might have dropped off the front story of the news, but this crisis has only begun. In the days after the water receded, reports began to trickle in about just how many homes had been destroyed, how many the authorities had deemed uninhabitable. First it was 1,000, then 2,000, and as we stand here, the estimate is over 4,000, with expectations that this figure will continue to climb and at least 4,000 families who cannot return to their home. The climate crisis has created a housing crisis, and whether or not you agree that it was the climate crisis that caused this extreme weather event, what we can all agree on in this place is that right now, 
There are people living in unacceptable conditions, sleeping rough, camping next to their home in tents, living in cars, older people living in caravans, garages, evacuation centres crowded together, remembering that COVID cases are still rising, or staying with friends and doing whatever they can. People have no doubt gone back to dangerous family situations because that is their only option to be able to go back to. So right now, today, if we wanted to, we could suspend standing orders to introduce two measures, and I'll turn to the details of those bills now. There are two specific measures in this bill that will address and respond to the protection of renters in flood impacted areas. The first of those in section 230 calls for a ban on evictions. Tenants in LGAs which have been declared flood impacted would then be protected from evictions except for a few exclusions, including if the property is uninhabitable or it ceases to be able to be used as a residence. This is a crucial protection at a time for renters in flood impact areas as a severe lack of accommodation offers incentives for opportunistic and greedy landlords to seek higher rents from whoever is prepared to pay the most. The second provision following on is a 12-month eviction moratorium. We saw the New South Wales government, I, I remember falling off my chair when I saw it when we were in lockdown, the New South Wales government introduced a moratorium on evictions. I never thought it would be possible. Now, that was a great policy. It was a great position. But what I'm saying is right now to say that the crisis impacting those in flood affected areas is not to the same level of extreme as the pandemic would be undermining the level of that crisis. And we need another moratorium on evictions in flood impacted LGAs across the state, influenced and done immediately. And I call on the minister responsible to take that action right now. Following on from this 12-month eviction moratorium, in section 233 of the Act, we are also calling for a cap on rents. The need to make sure that greedy landlords or those that are engaged in the short-term letting accommodation industry that are profiting out of crisis of housing affordability kind and of a weather impacted kind need to be called to account. And what this amendment does is it makes sure that rents cannot be increased between tenancies for a 12-month period as a property is leased to a new tenant if the previous tenant leaves voluntarily. Additionally, this section sets on a media, new medium or long-term rental properties to be leased at a medium rent for an area prior to the floods impacted by February 25. So what that says is basically that if you stop leasing to someone, in a flood impacted area, Speaker. It means that they cannot then kick you out, raise the rents astronomically because they know there's no rental properties available and then lease it to a new person who is gonna then suffer financial stress. What we're saying is that we need to peg rents at what is a median rental price. We think those rents were already too high, but at the same time, it is much better to do it at that level than it is to allow them to increase further or see greedy, interested parties wanting to put on a per night accommodation charge on a rental property that was a six month or a 12 month residential home. I really urge the government to look in detail at this bill. I will be circulating it to all members after this and I recognise that any second now I'm going to be cut off by the speaker and say that I will continue to talk about the other measures to protect, rent, protect renters in the coming um, period as soon as I'm able and I would urge the government, I would urge the government to not worry that this was a Greens bill, not worry that it started here to take these amendments, to take these amendments of section 231 and to take these amendments of the other sections that will address flood impacted regions and to move those amendments as an urgency. We can suspend standing orders, get this done and help people living in flood impacted areas right now in New South Wales. Thank you, Speaker. I think where I left off was talking about the complete market failure when it comes to dealing with housing affordability and the completely disastrous situation that we are seeing in New South Wales when it comes to renters' rights, to the protection of renters who have lost their home as a result of the very significant and extreme weather events that we've seen across the state, and the need for the government to step in and urgently act to be able to provide protections to tenants in this state. I think where I left off when I was talking about this was the impact on hundreds, thousands, uh, now over 4,000, and the number sadly continues to grow, of people in flood impacted areas in the Northern Rivers who have seen their homes, their communities devastated as a result of floods. At the same time, you know, let's just say that capitalism knows no bounds when it comes to how they want to um, engage with stuffing around the everyday person in our community just for a desire to seek profit. And what we've seen 
is already greedy investors, greedy property owners in flood impacted areas thinking about how they can make money out of this crisis. What we've seen, Madam Speaker, is we have seen people starting to consider whether, whether they're going to, instead of returning their property back to the long-term residential tenancy market, whether or not they're actually going to decide to put it on a short-term letting site and start charging people a per night cost as opposed to a weekly rate, a weekly rate that is affordable for families that are currently living in evacuation centres, in tents next to their uninhabitable homes or elderly people living in caravan parks. We have been working on the issue of renters' rights in this state for a long time, since before I was elected in 2014, when you would barely hear the mention of renters in this place, we have been pushing for a recognition of the many, many hundreds of thousands of people that rent in New South Wales to be given the same level of protection and recognition of their right to have a safe and secure place to live. And nothing could be more urgent and more, more in need of response right now than those living in flood impacted areas. As I went through the detail of this bill, we'll seek to do two things, two specific measures for residents living in flood impacted areas. The first will be in relation to putting a ban on evictions in the area precisely for that reason I just described, to stop people being able to boot out a tenant for no reason whatsoever, who wants to maintain a connection to their home, even if it has been flood damaged, and then to, instead of allowing them to move back in, hike up the rents, put it on a short-term letting site, make a per night cost, and people are all of a sudden priced out of the market and there's nowhere to live and nowhere for them to call home. The second measure, in addition to the evictions ban, is looking at the issue around rent caps. Now, we absolutely know that the cost of rents in New South Wales are just too damn high. They have been too high for too long, and successive governments in New South Wales have failed to act and stand up for the rights of those people that live in housing to recognise their right to have a safe, secure, habitable and affordable place to call home. The Greens are supportive of capping rents. We are supportive of pegging rents to a median rent income, a median rent amount that allows, that allows for people to actually be able to afford to pay rent without rent adding to the existing cost of living pressures. So the second part of our specific measures for flood impact areas that we're looking at introducing is in relation to section 231 and we're calling for a cap on rents. This provision will mean that existing rents will be unable to be increased during this period and rents for new leases and leases on new rental properties will be limited and must be in line with the median rent for the same type of property prior to February 25, 2022. What this amendment does is account for the changes in tenancies in flood impacted areas so that rents cannot be increased between tenancies during the 12 month period as a property is leased to a new tenant if the previous tenant leaves voluntarily. Additionally, this section calls for a new medium or long term rental properties to be leased at a medium rent for the area prior to the floods from February 25 this year. While we recognise that rents were absolutely already too high, and the member for Ballina, Tamara Smith, has talked multiple times in this place and in her community about the fact that even before this extreme weather event and the climate crisis met at the housing crisis in New South Wales, there were sometimes 10, sometimes you know, close to 100 people waiting to inspect a rental property in her region. And now, what do we have? We have a further escalation of this crisis, and do we have any action from the government on the other side? We have ministers going up to the flood impacted areas. We have ministers going up to the flood impacted areas, and they are absolutely doing what they can to be able to assist. But there's also things that we can do right here, right now in this chamber. There is nothing stopping the government coming in here, very open to seeing them come right in here right now and say, let's suspend standing orders. Actually, lo and behold, the Greens have got an idea that actually is responding 
to the needs and the interests of renters. Why? Because actually we've seen successive ministers for, for fair trading responsible for renters in this state come and go. I can think of at least four I've seen in my time here, and I've only been here six years, but we have been consistently standing up for renters' rights in this place. And so if there was any desire to respond to the needs of flood impacted victims in communities where they are struggling right now, then this rental reform could be put in place. We could see an amendment take into consideration the development of new rental properties, which could be properties which are moving from providing short-term accommodation into market leases. Rent protection in terms of stopping or limiting rent increases and implementing a stop on all evictions imperative in all of the flood affected LGAs, which we know are experiencing a housing emergency right now and it isn't going to end soon. It is absolutely critical that we recognise this and that's why we are calling for a number of broader provisions across the state. What I will do in relation to these broader provisions, so I'll just summarise them briefly now and then I will go into more detail about them when I continue to speak and introduce the details of this bill. The broader state provisions that we are looking to, to deliver for the people of New South Wales and for people who rent are ensuring that there is a requirement that all rental properties are free of mould and have adequate waterproofing. We absolutely know that the, he the extreme rains and the non-stop rains that have happened, whether it be in my community of Newtown, across the inner city, the inner west and across the state, have resulted in significant present, um, presence of mould, which is having a huge impact on people's health. The other thing that is absolutely critical in relation to this um, provisions, the, the provisions in this bill is to put a final end to no grounds evictions in the state. This is something that is not new. This is something that was brought up when um, the, the now treasurer, then minister responsible for the Residential Tenancies Act, Matt Keane, was in this place and we saw that there was a push by the community, by the Everybody's Home campaign, backed by the Tenants' Union, backed by so many others, to say that what we needed to see was an end to unfair no-grounds evictions in the state. The Tenants' Union have been leading the charge on this, and their eviction, hardship and housing crisis report just recently showed that the average cost of a move for renting households in New South Wales ranges from 3215 for a single person in a household in Greater Sydney through to 5400 for a family household in regional New South Wales. Wales. It is critical that we end unfair no grounds evictions so that renters aren't slugged with these costs in addition to the incredibly high cost of living um, issues that they are currently facing. We also want to see on cap a cap on rents across the state. If this Premier is so set on capping public service wages to 1.5 or 2.5 per cent, then why is it not reasonable that the same government acts to cap rents in the state in line with public service wage, wage rises. Because the only way that you cannot go into housing stress is to see that your wages growth matches and your matches your costs of living. And we know that for 60 to 70 people in percent of renters in the state, that currently they are living under housing stress. We know that that housing stress is real and we know that this government needs to do more to recognise that housing is a fundamental human right and something that they need to be acting to stand up for the rights of renters when it comes to the power imbalance currently inflicted on them by landlords.